We enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. We've come to worship and magnify the Lord tonight, the God of our salvation. I love you and I praise you, Lord. I magnify your name. I thank you, God, for what you're getting ready to do in this service tonight. Believe in you, God, to work, to heal, to deliver, to set free. Use us tonight for your glory, God. We want to lift you up tonight in the name of Jesus. There is nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. We give you praise, Jesus. Come on, could you lift your voices with a hallelujah? With a I love you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the last night of four him. At least these consecutive services and we've had a time we're so thankful for every visitor that has been here all of our guests that has traveled from far and wide man I'm telling you it's just been a joy and a high privilege to be able to have you in the house of the Lord OPC is very thankful for the friendships that we have realizing that we can do more together and uh, and I'm glad today that we're not in competition with one another but we can show up and we can lift up holy hands, magnifying our great God. <clears throat> if you don't have the Holy Ghost tonight, you can get it in this place tonight. If you've not been baptized in Jesus' name, we'll baptize you the Bible way tonight. There is nothing like living for the Lord. The old song said it gets sweeter as the days go by. I'm glad I know him. I said I'm glad I know him. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I turn these folks loose, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for being here. I want to say thank you to our praise team for leading us in worship every night. Thank you to those that have helped us at altar service to those that are working even right now over at the campgrounds we're so very thankful for them they have cooked they have worked they have labored and I am so very thankful for them I wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for my daddy and I'm glad my dad's here and uh, he's impacted my life the way he has and I'm so thankful for him I'm thankful for the full-time evangelist that's in the house tonight. Brother Miller did a tremendous job Wednesday night. We've got a new program and system up here that we're running, and Brother Wilburn LaRue is a full-time evangelist, but he's about to pull his hair out back there. <laughs> Amen. But I'm telling you, he's a great man, and I'm so very thankful for the hand of the Lord on his life. Brother Todd Tucker is here tonight. He's a full-time evangelist, and I'm so very thankful for he and his wife. My dad is full-time on the field, an evangelist. Uh, my son, full-time on the field, an evangelist. And Brother Dwayne McCall, full-time evangelist. I'm so very thankful that they took time to be here in this conference. That means their church me. Amen. It means something to them, and I'm, I'm glad they're here. So thank you to all of you that have traveled to be here. OPC, I'm so thankful that you're here tonight, and I'm so thankful for the privilege of getting to pastor you these 11 years. Distinguished guest among us, and Brother Mills, our district secretary, it's a joy to have you, sir. Thank you for being here tonight. We had our foreign missions director here last night. We had our, our uh, youth president here last night. And then tonight, what a high privilege it is to have Brother David Poole, our district superintendent. It's a joy to have you tonight. Are you ready to lift up Jesus tonight? I'm going to pause just one more moment. And I want to thank God for the leadership of this church.
I couldn't do this the way I do it without this church and without the help of Brother and Sister Temple. Thank you so much for all that you do. You're a blessing to us. Amen. And none of us would be here without our Savior. He is still Alpha. He is still Omega. He is still the beginning and the end. And tonight, as always, our worship and our praise is for Him. Put your hands together and lift up Jesus tonight. Come on, hallelujah. Let's give God praise in this place tonight. We worship you, Jesus. We lift up your name tonight, God. Oh, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Sometimes we stand alone. That's when I reach for my holy armor, pick up my shield of faith, and I march on to the battlefield. Take out my sword and say, The battle is hot, but it's not too steep. The battle is rough, but I'm not too weak. I won't turn back. No. But I'm not too weak I won't turn back, no I won't turn back The road is hard, but it's not too long The enemy's near, but he's not too strong I won't turn back, no I won't turn back It's a race of strong resistance We press on through the night so battlefield, you walk by faith and not by sight. That's when I reach for my holy armor. I pick up my shield of faith. Come on, pick up my sword and say, The mountain is high, but it's not too steep. The battle is rough, but I'm not too weak. I won't turn back. Too strong, I won't turn back. No, I won't turn back. It's a race of strong resistance. We press on through the night. Out here on the battlefield, we walk by faith and not by sight. That's when I reach for my holy armor. I pick up my shield of faith. March on through this whole battlefield Pick up my sword and I say The mountain is high but it's not too hey. steep The battle is rough but I'm not too I won't I turn won't back, turn back. No. no, I won't turn I back. won't turn back The road is hard but it's not too long And I'll be the enemy's here but it's not too strong I won't turn back no. Some of 
somebody that the enemy knows I'm not turning back tonight. Hey, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. Sing it again. I won't. I won't turn back. I won't turn. I won't turn back. I won't turn back. The mountain is high. The mountain is high, but it's not too steep. The battle is rough, but I'm not too weak. I won't turn back. Somebody give God praise in this place. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, he's going to condemn. This is the heritage of the children of the Lord. Come on. I don't, I don't face anything in this world that I have to worry about. It's already under his feet. I read the back of the book and it said that we win. Come on, somebody. We win. Hallelujah. You come to me with a spear and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. I've won many battles, this will be the same. I declare victory in Jesus' name. I'm born with a pride. I got victory that I can't explain. I've been baptized in Jesus' name. I declare war. I'm born with a pride. Don't like it when we sing and shout Cause when we do He's gotta shut his mouth The pain is gone His deeds are done It's time to dance It's time to run You're born with a prize
everything the devil stole from you. Stop his head. Did you hear this? Bruise your ball with a fire. I feel like singing. If you've been through what I've been through, there's one thing you're going to have to do. Take back everything the devil stole from you. Stop his head. Did you hear this? Bruise your ball with a fire. I got victory. of the Lamb by the word of their testimony. This testimony is in this place of where God brought you from and there's fixing to be testimonies in this place of what God brought you through. I want somebody to know tonight that victory is in this place and if you just dare to trust in Him, God will be faithful to His word tonight. I got victory that I can't explain. I've been baptized in Jesus' name. I declare war on the enemy. with a cry. There is no Just in case you didn't know. I plead the blood, set the captives free. Change the use of body, don't bother anymore. I'm all right. Now I've been born. I'm set free. The chains are used to bind me now lay at my feet. It's time to fight. It's time to lead. I declare victory. I got victory that I can't explain. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise in this place. If you believe God for the victory, if you've been bought by the blood, give God praise in this house. Oh, we're victorious in this place. If we're victorious, we should act victorious. We should walk a little more victorious. We should worship a little more victorious. Anybody victorious in this house tonight? God is good and he is greatly to be praised. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I get to do the most important part of the middle of the service. Amen. It's not the most important part of the service, but man, right here in the middle, it seems like a really good place to take an offering. And uh, I, I want to tell you, I, I, a little bit different than normal. I, uh, if I can, my friend asked me to take this and, and, and leave a little word. And I was in the prayer room, Brother Chris, and uh, my church praying for Wednesday night. And the Lord spoke a word to me for this church. And I didn't know how I'd even have that ability. I said, God, that's not... I don't even know what I'm going to do with that. And he said, I'm telling you, you're going to give it. So I came to give a word for this church. There's some theologians that, that disagree. They, some say that the Ark of the Covenant weighed 183 pounds. Some say 600. Some say almost 1,000 because of how much gold. And the, but the, there's a little bit of, a, of a, a historical reference to the fact that when the priests would get underneath the Ark of the Covenant and they were going into battle that they were picking up God, and he was sitting on the mercy seat, and, uh, and, and they were picking up God and bringing him with them, that no matter how heavy that ark was, and no matter how long they had to carry it, when they picked him up, God arose and helped them, and not just helped them with victory, but he helped them carry the burden that they were carrying. It was a baby, a heavy ark, but they could carry it for a long time, as long as it took to be victorious. Because he was helping them. That Jewish history says, and they kind of had that theological mindset that when he, they picked up the ark, God also got under it and helped them carry it. As long as they were right and righteous, we know that. And the Lord spoke this word to me, and this is a little bit different for OPC. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, 
and you shall find rest under your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I feel like the Lord told me to tell this church that everything that you go to do for His kingdom, He's going to be yoked with you. And I know you know that. But he's going to be yoked with you. There's a reason why the burden of the Lord is light. It's because he stands with you. You don't have to fight the fight by yourself. You don't have to war against Satan by yourself. You don't have to push by yourself. You don't have to overcome your past by yourself. Every time you yoke up with God, he yokes up with you. And the reason his burden is light is because there's no way you're going to carry what he can carry. But if you'll put the yoke on, He'll carry you and he'll carry your burden. Leave your burden at the feet of Jesus. When you go to have revival, he's going to have revival with you. When you want to save your city, he wants to save your city with you. When you want your body healed, Brother Harvey, and you're asking, he wants your body healed as well. Yoke up with Jesus. And I'm so thankful for 11 years, amen, of pastoral power in this city with Brother Chris. And they put on the greatest, amen, anniversary conference bar none anywhere you can go. They do everything first class. There's nothing they do not do. They just treat you like royalty. When you leave, you leave fatter than when you came. Amen. You're not just full in the spirit. You're full with everything that they do. I don't know very many people that put on a conference, amen, any better. And I thank God for brother and sister Chris and Ala Pentecostal Church. Amen. Amen. You're a witness to this city. You're a witness to us. And we're very thankful for that. And I'm asking you, if you will, to help me bless them as they've blessed us. Help us give as unto the Lord. And my dad used to say, you Lord will bless you for giving it because you can't outgive God. So I'm going to ask you to yoke up with OPC tonight as the ushers come and they're yoking up with God. Amen. Whatever you can do and however you can give, I can guarantee you this. If you learn to give with an open hand, God will always fill it back to you. Amen. God will always fill it back to you. You cannot outgive God. As the ushers come, we're going to ask you to worship with the Lord and worship the Lord in song. Worship with us as we give. And I guarantee you, God's going to do the impossible tonight because He can't do anything else. He keeps on giving and He keeps on blessing. If you will, just dig deep and help us bless Him as He blesses us tonight. In Jesus.
tonight. We speak that name over our families and in the name of Jesus Christ he is here to heal and save and deliver. Anybody here to receive it tonight? Anybody believe it? Anybody come expecting? Anybody come looking for it tonight? Come on, anybody come looking for it tonight? I believe you for it, God. What a wonderful, what a wonderful time that we have had. May God be the glory for the things that he has done. Tremendous ministry, amen, the miracles that God has done in this place over the last couple of nights.
can I tell you that God has got something in store so special for us tonight. He's just looking for somebody that's looking. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've come to open the door tonight to the miraculous in my life. God, whatever you want to do in my life, I'm open to it. I receive it tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's my high privilege and honor, amen, to introduce our speaker tonight. A great preacher, but more than that, a great Christian. And he is a blessing to everybody that knows him. Amen. Brother Mark Johnson. We love and appreciate you, sir. Would you help me welcome to this pulpit, Pastor Memphis, Tennessee. Mark Johnson. Would you raise your hands and worship the Lord with me? Hallelujah, 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 my God, I feel the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, amen, you may be seated, I give honor to this great conference, this great church, and this great people. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Hallelujah. I'm emotional tonight because I keep seeing people that I love so much. And uh, right before I was introduced, Bishop Bill Cotton walked up here. I want you to stand, Brother Cotton. This is the most precious man right there. Him and I talk every single week. I pastored in Catahoula Parish for 27 years. And uh, I'm so glad he is my friend. And I, I look across this congregation. I see some people that I used to pastor. And uh, if anybody wants to know anything about Sister Jaden Walton, I will tell you. I know the dirt, but it's so good to see him and all of the rest of you. What an honor. Um, your pastor is just, he is just awesome. How many, how many of you love Brother Chris? See, yeah. There he is, he's down in the dungeon, and um, I'm so glad to see him. Our superintendent is here. There's not a better preacher in this world than Brother David Poole right there, and I, I love, I love you, and uh, Ben, you know, I, I was with uh, Pastor Steve Warman a couple of weeks ago, him and I went to try to find the old Mid-South District campground. We hadn't been there since the 1980s. And he and I, we found it. The way we talked about camp meetings and Brother Bill Mills preaching the house down. And uh, man, can he still do it, Sister Mills? Can he do it? Just a little slower. Amen. My great friend, Brother Hines, has been driving me, and I'm so thankful to have my wife here with me, and uh, I am blessed. Is it okay if I sing? Let's try it. Mm, when it's time to depart from this old body of mine, I don't own one thing I can't leave behind. I want to be free to sail through the skies. That's why I'm walking with Jesus. Let the world go by. I'll stand for Jesus. Let the world go by. I'll claim his promise. He will supply, we'll walk together, the Lord and I, I'll stand for Jesus, let the 
world go by. I want to sing this again. When it's time to depart from this old body of mine, I don't want to own one thing I can't leave behind. I want to be free to sail through the sky. That's why I'm walking with Jesus. Let the world go by. I'll stand for Jesus. Let the world go by. I'll claim his promise. He will supply. We'll walk together. The Lord and I. I'll stand for Jesus. Let the world go Go by. Anybody here have a made up mind? Hallelujah. Amen. If you would turn with me to Psalm 133. I almost left this morning because the preaching last night was so good. It was good. My great friend, Brother Nash, I love you. Brother Duggar back there, he was on our youth board many years ago. And uh, there was one night we prayed 120-something kids through the Holy Ghost, just me and him all by ourselves. We were, we were tired. Amen. What an honor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. You know, I held him under just a little bit longer to make sure. Hey, Amen. I love you, prophet. Man of God. Psalms 133, verses 1 through 3. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment. Upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, commanded the blessing, even life for evermore. I want to call your attention to that first verse. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. I want to preach on this subject, the tragedy of the cave wars. The tragedy of the cave wars. Can we bow our heads and, Elder, I want you to lead us in prayer. God of heaven. There is nothing that could ever take preeminence or precedence over your word. I'm asking you, God, in the critical and crucial times that we're living in. I'm asking you, Lord, as we stand upon the very precipice of the greatest revival we've ever, ever, ever had happen to us, that you would move with the power in the river of your anointing tonight and cause us to have the kind of heartbeat we need to effect this great move that you wish to command. Anoint your servants, unction him in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Would you turn around and shake somebody's hand and tell them I hope the preacher doesn't preach too long. Amen. You may be seated.
tragedy of the cave wars. My wife and I and our little boys, we have three little boys, and I was invited to preach uh, up north. And on our way up north, we drove through uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and as we passed through Kentucky, we began to see all these signs there on the interstate that uh, announce the different caves that are in that area. So we asked our boys if they would uh, be interested in uh, going and touring a cave. And of course, little boys being the way little boys are, they, they screamed and shouted, Brother Raymond, that they wanted to go on one of those tours. And so we pulled off and we stopped at a cave called Diamond Caverns. And we paid for our ticket and we began uh, to make the descent with our tour group and our tour guide down into that caverns. It was some 400 and something steps down into the ground. And it was so fascinating uh, how neat and and. You know, it was, it was the middle of July, and so it was hot outside, but as we began to go down, it began to get cooler and cooler, and at first, walking through this cave, this diamond caverns, at first, you know, I was having to turn sideways, and I was wearing a ball cap uh, because I have a bald head, and my head gets cold, and so I had a ball cap on, but I, I didn't duck down low enough, and so the little little knob or button or whatever that is up the bubble at the top of the hat, it got knocked off, and it's somewhere in that cavern for all eternity, I guess. But anyway, we, we began to walk through this cavern, and it was so neat. But once we got past the tight areas of that cavern, we came to what they called the gallery, and, and it opened up, and there were beautiful stalactites and stalagmites and natural formations that were so pretty. But as we looked around, I began to see that many of these natural monuments were broken. Many of them had been busted. Many of them were chipped. And the tour guide, she saw that I was noticing all of these broken monuments and she said I, I, I know that you know that, that they're broken because of man. She said unfortunately they are what's left over from the cave wars and I am a, a student of history. I love history and I had never heard of anything like the cave wars so I asked her what were the cave wars? 82 square miles of rolling hills and valleys in south-central Kentucky make up Mammoth Cave National Park. The 26th National Park is home to an enormous labyrinth of underground passages. In this region, there are many different cave or cavern tours that can be taken. In the early 20th century, an era of competition gripped the Mammoth Cave region. Rival cave owners battled in the courtroom as well as along the roads for the tourist dollars passing through Kentucky's cave country en route to the future national park. Road signs and solicitors lined the highways to spread false accusations about other caves and redirect travelers to one of the many competing show caves. More than 20 caves were open to the public in the Mammoth Cave region by the 1920s when the feud reached its climax. The cave workers were not satisfied just to create false stories about their competition, but they began to sneak into the rival caves at night with sledgehammers to bust up the stalagmites, stalactites, and the natural monuments that made these caves so special. This war caused a major decline in tourism. Ultimately, the cave wars hurt everybody because the caverns were damaged. 
The cave owners lost money and eventually they lost their caves. And the tourists were repulsed by the toxic atmosphere of competition. All because the owners and the workers of the different caves went to war. Can I ask the people in this room, who gets blessed when Christians go to war? Who gets blessed when churches go to war? Who gets blessed when churches or saints who go to churches go to war? Who gets blessed when preachers go to war? Can I tell you that Christians are not blessed when they fight each other? Can I tell you that churches are not blessed when they fight each other? Ministries are not blessed when they constantly compete against one another. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14.33, it says of God... For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. If God is not the author of confusion, then the implication is that the devil, in fact, is the author of confusion. That's who rejoices when the spirit of competition gets on the inside of a church. That's who smiles when saints don't talk to each other for 20 years. That's who celebrates our conflicts. That's who celebrates our offenses. That's who celebrates our divisions. I rebuke the spirit of war in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of competition in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of battle in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it. I rebuke those things that would try to divide us. I rebuke that spirit that would try to get us to fight among ourselves. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. I speak togetherness in the name of Jesus. I speak the right focus in the name of Jesus. I speak the right spirit in the name of Jesus. My God, I feel like preaching. Do you know that there is an enemy that is out there? There is an enemy that's trying to destroy our families. There is an enemy that's trying to destroy our children. There is an enemy that's trying to conquer this area. And friend, it's time to fight the enemy with everything that we've got. It's time to go after souls with everything many years ago I heard one of the greatest truths that I've ever heard about revival there was a revival that broke loose in Ethiopia And I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of people in that nation turn their their eyes towards God and their hearts towards God. Hundreds of thousands were receiving the Holy Ghost at one time. Miracles, signs, and wonders were taking place. It was absolutely amazing. And so one day the man who was over this group that was having this great great revival one day he was being interviewed by some young preachers and this young man and I love all these young men and young women up here worshiping and shouting thank God for young people that love him But they said to this man, this bishop, they said, oh, you must have prayed for revival for a long time. You must have cried out to God to experience this great revival. You must have really pursued a spirit of revival. And this man of God said, he said, we did not pray for revival. We prayed for unity. And when you... Unity came, then revival came. 
when unity came, that's when revival came. How important is unity to God's church? Charles Spurgeon said this, Satan always hates Christian fellowship. It is his policy to keep Christians apart. Anything which can divide saints from one another, he delights in. He attaches far more importance to godly togetherness than we do. Since union is strength, Satan does his best to promote separation. Corey Ten Boom said, be united with other Christians. A wall with loose bricks is not good. The bricks must be cemented together. Dwight L. Moody said, I have never yet known the Spirit of God to work where the Lord's people were divided. I am telling you church tonight that if we are going to experience the revival that God has called us into in this hour, we're going to have to get together and have church. We're going to have to get together and fight hell. We're going to have to get together and worship God. It's going to take getting together. It's going to take loving each other. It's going to take unity. My God, it's going to take unity. When unity came, revival came. When unity came to the church, revival came. When unity came to the country, that's when revival came. I rebuke that spirit that says there's big eyes and little U's. I rebuke that spirit that says I've got to comp- compete with every other ministry in town. I rebuke that spirit that that says every other apostolic church is my enemy. Somehow, some way, we got to get together and win the loss for God. Somehow, some way, we got to get together and shout. Somehow, some way, we've got to get together in unity. should not surprise us because Pastor Van Lu, unity has always been a key to the miraculous it has always been Acts 3 1 and 2 now Peter and John went up together into the temple did y'all hear that now Peter and John went up together into the temple At the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. How did Peter and John go to the church? How did they go in order that they could pray? The Bible says that they went together. The Bible indicates that they were in unity with each other. And as they came in unity, they came in contact with a man who was lame. And that lame man began to ask these two men of God that were in unity do you have any alms? Do you have anything that will help my situation? Do you have anything that will change my life? Peter fixes his eyes on the man and he says look on us if you want to know who God really is Look on us. If you want to see how God works, look on us. If you want to see what unity produces, look on us.
cross, silver and gold, have I none, but such as I have, give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. That man was healed, but the miracle started when men of God got together in unity. We're not going to fight each other. We're going to shout together. We're not coming against each other. We're going to reach the... Hey, we can reach a lost and broken world if we will get together. We can get sick folks in the house of God if we'll get together. We can experience miracles, signs, and wonders if we get together. We can reach our city together. We can reach our area together. We can set this area on fire together. Hallelujah. Unity has also been key to the moving of the Spirit in the church. In Acts, Jesus commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days. Hence, Acts 1, 6 through 8. When they therefore were come together. When they therefore were come together. When they therefore were come together. They asked of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. <laughs> and then Acts 2 and 1 it says and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a Hey, we've got marriages falling apart. We've got people that are desperately looking for answers. We've got people whose whole world is in a mess. And I know exactly what they need. They need a one God apostolic tongue-talking church full of people that aren't fighting, full of people that aren't in competition, full of people that know how to pray together, full of people who know how to worship together. I just tell you what we need in this hour. We don't need anybody trying to impress us. We don't need your impressive suit. We don't need your impressive talent. What we need is a move of God from the top to the bottom, from the right to the left, from the pulpit to the pew. We need God to have his way. We need the glory of God to fill the house and it can happen when we get together somebody raise your hands and worship God
Come on, somebody tell him yes. Come on, we need unity. Say yes. Use me, God. I'm saying yes. Use our church. I'm saying yes. One of the greatest lessons of unity in the Word of God is found at the Tower of Babel. Genesis 11 and 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burned them throughly and they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar and they said go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name let us make us a name let us make us a name name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth the descendants of Noah settled in a land named Shinar the population was growing and they all spoke one language the, the people decided that they wanted to build a tall proud symbol of how great they were and how great that they had made their nation. They weren't giving God the glory and they weren't giving God the honor. Can I tell somebody in this place, one of the worst mistakes that you'll ever make in your life is when you stop giving God the glory and when you stop praising God. Hear me church, God deserves all of the glory and God deserves all of the praise <laughs> I can't say that without this old song coming into my mind you don't know like I know what he's done for me you don't know like I know what he's done for me you don't know like I know what he's done for me what the Lord has done for me I'm not up here today because I'm good I am up here this evening because of the goodness of my God I am blessed but my blessings they've got to do with the goodness of Jesus and when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me my soul my soul my soul cries it's a mighty God that brought me this far. It's a mighty God who saved me. It's a mighty God who raised me. It's a mighty God that brought me out. It's a mighty God that healed my body. I won't forget to praise him. I won't forget to worship him. I won't forget to lift him up. If I wasn't so fat, I'd preach right now. The Babylonians, they wanted a tower that would reach to the heavens so that they could be like God and so that they would not need God. Many other biblical scholars believe that they were building that tower in order to worship other gods. In particular, they wanted to worship the gods of the sun and the gods of the moon and the gods of the stars. But friend, I've got a question for you. Why in the world would you want to worship the gods of the moon 
and the gods of the sun and the gods of the stars when my God spoke the stars into existence and my God spoke the moon into existence and my God said let there be light and there was light I'm telling you why would I worship a lesser God when I know the king of kings and the lord of lords why would I worship a lesser God when my God is the great God I don't want to worship lesser gods. I want to worship the God. I want... Genesis 11 and 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. It. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. At my... the pe- behold. The people is one and they have all one language and this they began to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. That's right. The Bible, the Bible said the people is one. And some of your really educated folks in there are saying the Bible got it wrong here. Shouldn't it say that the people are one? No. God put it in there for a reason. God didn't make a mistake. It is not a grammatical error. Are is plural, but is is singular. These people were so unified that God said they is one. I want God to look at my church and I want him to say they is one. I want God to look at our churches and I want him to say they is one. They is is one in their faith. They is one in their revival. They is one in their worship. They is one in their passion. They is one in their doctrine. They is one. And God went further and he said, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. In other words, the people were so unified that God said, God said that they would be able to do anything. They were so unified. They were so together that the Bible said that they could build and they could accomplish anything. And I would submit to you tonight, church, if people who were not living for God and people who were not worshiping God, if they could be so unified that God said that they could accomplish anything what would happen if we had a unified church what would happen if we had a, I believe we'd set this world on fire I believe we would see apostolic demonstration I believe we would experience the miraculous let's stand Genesis 11 and 7. Go to, let us go down. And there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. 
So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. They left off. We won't build anything if there's a bunch of confusion. We won't build anything if there's a bunch of competition. We won't build anything if there's a bunch of strife and division. So God confounded their language and caused them to go into chaos. The building of the tower stopped and the people scattered. And right there, I believe the enemy of our souls learned a lesson. And I believe that he learned it well. Isn't it interesting? Whenever God's people began to have revival, the enemy then starts sowing seeds of strife. Whenever the church begins to grow, the enemy starts sowing chaos. Whenever Whenever the church begins to unify, the enemy starts sowing deception. You hear me, church? Wherever you see discord, you know that the enemy is at work. Whenever you see division, you know the enemy is at work. There's a spirit of strife that is in the land. I believe if you look at this world, you can see the marks of sin everywhere there is division in our world like never before there is a spirit of violence like never before friend I am telling you that this world does not need a church that is playing games and this church this world does not need a church that's trying to be trendy and this world does not need a church that's trying to be cool but this this world needs a one God apostolic holy rolling on fire for God. Bishop Poole, come here. Ah, my God, I need some music playing. You know what? We are fighting against a spirit of division like never before. But you want to see how we fight our battles? We're going to get together and we're going to have revival together. I need your help right now. Amen. You know what the enemy's trying to do? He's trying to put a wedge in between the generations. And he's trying to put that wedge to where the older generation and the younger generation, they feel like they can't have revival together. But you know what I think we ought to do right in the devil's face? I think we need to get a hold of each other and we need to shout unto God. We we need to worship. We need to be faithful. I rebuke the spirit of division in the name of Jesus. Devil, you shut your mouth right now. I rebuke that spirit of strife. We're going to have unity. You know what? This man right here can sing and I can sing just a little bit and the enemy would like to tell me he thinks he's better than you he thinks he can do more than what you can do when the truth is it's not about me at all it's not about our talent it's not what I can do better than what somebody else can do I tell you what it's about we're going to worship God together. We're going to sing together. If he gets the special, I'm going to worship God. If I sing the special, he... Brother Worley, I need the dream team real quick. Where's Brother Chris at? This is the dream team. Come on. Let me tell you what the devil's been saying. The devil's been saying... Young preachers. I know you're a grandpa, but you're still young. Man, have y'all noticed he's got more white hair than any of us? 
The devil's been saying that you can't get a, a group of young men of God together to have, my God, they're going to have a conference here. Then they're going to have a camp meeting here. They're going to have a conference here. They're going to have a conference here. devil said they can't do that there's gonna be some friction there's gonna be some fighting there's gonna be some competition I want you a friend to shout in the can you do that my God y'all but brother Van Lu we gonna shout together we gonna have revival together my God if you're preaching I'm gonna shout if you're teaching, I'm going to shout. I don't have to have the microphone. I'm going to shout anyway. I come against the enemy in the name of Jesus. We're going to have revival in every one of the churches. It's going to grow. Every one of these churches, they're going to break loose. I wish some people in here would come up and say, we're going to shout together. We're going to have revival. Come on, if you need a miracle, I double dog dare you to come up to this altar. If you need a miracle, come on, get a hold of somebody. Let's shout. Let's dance. Let's sing. Let's praise Him. Moving on the inside, so come and answer it. And cast your cares on Him. You'll open up a window for you out of this. Where the Lord steps in, He brings everything you need. Healing, power, victory. It's all up to you. Whatever you need Him to do, just trust and never believe and never think you will receive. Oh, yeah. I can feel the presence of the Lord, and I'm going to get my blessing right now. I can feel the presence of the Lord. I feel in the Holy Ghost that there's some people that need a miracle in this place right now. If you need a miracle, I wish you would raise your hands. If you need a miracle, look, look at those hands. I wish you reach over and begin to pray with them right now in the name that is greater than any other name. The name that is greater. I speak healing. Can't you see them working on the outside? Oh, 
step here, 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 step Tried to single one of ours out. Passed out on a pew. Couldn't get her feet under her. Cold and clammy. I don't know what was wrong with her. But Sister Tammy, lift your hands to the Lord. All I know is look what the Lord has done. Sometimes you can't tell what was wrong. But you can always tell who's right. He's always right. He's always right. And when God's people come together, miracles, signs, and wonders, you ought to step in. 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 Do you want to be blessed? Step in, 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 step in and be blessed. Step in, step in, step in, step in, step in and be blessed. Step in, step in, step in. Can you put your hands together like this? Step in, step in, step in and be blessed. Step in, step in, step in and be blessed. Ooh, step in, step in, step in now. Step in, step in now. Step in and be blessed. You gotta step in. Step in. You gotta step in. Step in. You gotta step in. Step in and be blessed. You gotta step in. Step in. Step in. Step in. Step in and be blessed. Step in. Step in. Step in. Step in. Step in. You gotta step in, step in, step in, step in, step in, step in, step in and be blessed. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Are you glad you come before Him? Uh oh. Some young man over here stepping in right now. Can't you see him moving on the outside? I can feel him working on the inside. Come and enter in and cast your cares on him. He'll open up the windows and pour you out a blessing. When the Lord steps in, he brings everything you need. Healing, healing, power, victory. So it's all up to you. started working on the Chris family and I got a nephew over here slaying the Holy Ghost I got a sister that was shouting Bobby pins out of her hair I look over here and my nieces and the Holy Ghost is just flowing you gotta take a little time and have a little church when God gets ready to pour it out you gotta say all right God I'm stepping in Shake loose, shake loose, shake loose, shake loose, shake loose, and be blessed. You gotta shake loose, shake loose, shake loose, shake loose, shake loose, shake loose, and be blessed. You gotta shake loose, shake loose, you gotta shake loose, shake loose, you gotta shake loose, shake loose, and be blessed. Right now, shake loose, right now, shake loose, right now, shake loose, and be blessed. I got a feeling, I 
got a feeling that when the Lord comes back, he's going to come back on a church tonight. And Brother Johnson, I don't know where you are, but the Bible said in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the Bible said that the dead in Christ, they're going to rise first. Then we which remain shall be called up. Shall be called up. Shall be called up. Shall be called up. You want to make the rapture? You want to get off the ground? You want the Holy Ghost to quicken your mortal body? You want to get caught up? You're going to get caught up together! Together! where two or three are gathered together. Not just a gathering, but we've got to get together. Somebody ought to get a hold of somebody by the hand right now and lift that hand to heaven and declare togetherness in this house. Come on, you ought to get a hold of somebody. Come on, he said, I'll get in the middle of that. I'll get in the middle of that. I'll get in the middle of that. You ought to start agreeing and believing right now for whatever, for whatever, for whatever. We're gathered together tonight. Anything is possible. Why? Because he's in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. weary and well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not I wish somebody get together cause when you're together and you stand together you're gonna reap the harvest that God has for you tonight somebody shout yeah Shout yeah! With me for here, everybody, and go, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody, nobody. Nobody, 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 nobody
Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. There came nobody. Do we like Jesus? Don't you like what you feel in the house tonight? Hasn't it been great the last three nights, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? God's power's been in this place in a mighty way. How many of you realize God never intended for this to stay in here? God never intended for the power that we're feeling right now to stay within these four walls, but it's supposed to be outside the walls. I was leaving the campgrounds tonight, and I felt God give me a charge to the church. Brother Chris didn't know it. He asked me, say, hey, man, I want you to close out the service. I said, well, that's, that's just a God thing. The scripture says that in more than one occasion, it talks about the voice of the Lord. And it said, it is as the sound of many waters, the voice of many waters in another place. It's not happenstance that Jesus said, out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Holy Ghost. If you got the gift of the Holy Ghost in your life, why don't you raise your hand right now? Do you realize you're part of a river tonight? Uh, out of your belly shall flow rivers of, of living water. The scripture says that the voice of the Lord is as the sound of many rivers, many waters. If the world is going to hear the voice of God, you know how they're going to do it? From the sound of many waters. That's you uh, letting your voice out uh, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, uh, when you talk to your neighbor, uh, when you witness to your co-worker, uh, when you tell uh, that person down the street, uh, hey, won't you come to church with me? Uh, well, why God's going to do something in your life. Uh, what they're hearing uh, is the voice of God uh, because it's the voice uh, of many uh, waters. And I felt God tell me to tell you you need to go home. Some of you live here in Isla. Some of you go to OPC, but there's a bunch of you that don't go to OPC. Uh, but when you get home, uh, you need to let the river flow. Uh, you need to let this voice out. Uh, this world needs to hear the voice uh, of God. Uh, and they're only going to hear it from you. Uh, their only chance uh, is you. Uh, so let the voice out. Uh, let the voice of God go. Uh, and begin to tell your neighbor. Uh, begin to tell your co-worker. Uh, I got an answer uh, for your need. Uh, I got the answer for your sickness I got the answer for your marriage let the voice out so I charge you go home and tell your neighbor tell your co-worker you need to come to church with me God's got something special for you God wants to do something in your life God has a miracle waiting for you I challenge you go home and let the voice of many waters loose in your city and watch what God does when when you let the voice out God, I thank you for your goodness and mercy. I thank you, God, for what we feel in this place. I ask as we get ready to leave right now that this spirit go with us. Uh, this power, this anointing that we feel. Uh, let us take it outside the walls of this church. Uh, let us take it to our communities. Uh, let us take it to our job sites. Uh, let us take it, oh Lord, uh, to the world that is around us. Uh, and let the sound of many waters uh, be loose uh, into this world. Uh, and let revival uh, begin to spread uh, like wildfire uh, through every church uh, that's represented uh, in this 
this place right now in Jesus' name. Can you put your hands together? And can you just